secure the release of the Soviet devotees interned in prisons, labor camps, and psychiatric institutions. To everyone's surprise, the campaign of the Krishna kids encouraged thousands of children across the nation to write letters of concern to world leaders. While the Krishna Kids campaign was going on in Australia, devotees in Europe and America had established petition campaigns and thousands of postcards were already being sent from concerned people from around the world to the Soviet authorities. The campaigns were being organised from the headquarters of the campaign to free the Soviet Hare Krishnas in Sweden and also by Amnesty International. Here in Australia, devotees started a nationwide petition campaign in a bus to collect thousands of signatures to bring further attention to the plight of Soviet Krishna devotees in prison for their religious beliefs. The campaign showed the strong support and concern from the people of Australia that human rights should be given to members of the Hare Krishna movement in the Soviet Union. This next song isn't performed by the Krishna kids, it's performed by devotees on the travelling temple. Bus carrying 14 Hare Krishna devotees left Sydney on Palm Sunday. 
they travel around Australia gathering signatures for a petition calling on Kremlin leader Mikhail Gorbachev to put a stop to religious persecution of Russian Hare Krishna devotees. Krishnas are determined in their quest to bring the world public opinion to bear on Russia, so that innocent friends imprisoned and abused harshly by their religious beliefs are set free. Should hear our song. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Our traveling temple will go on till they're set free. Travel God's books are made. The whole world to see. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. In every town and village, we are traveling your way. Now it's time for the world. Imprisonment of the Soviet Hare Krishna seemed to open these children's eyes to the harsh realities that exist in the world. People of all races and all religions must be given the basic human rights that allow them to be creative and express their individuality in human society. As Mahatma Gandhi once said, throughout history, truth and justice always prevail. There have been tyrants and murderers, and for a time they have seemed invincible, but in the end they always fall. Think of it, always. On the back of the Krishna Kids album, the children themselves voice their own concern. Leaders in all fields are a source of inspiration, especially to the young. Too often, our heroes are also leaders in degradation. We do not want to see this civilization decline and fall as so many great empires have in the past. We're appealing to all leaders to please set a model of good behavior upon which to build the future of the world.
we got all our needs So listen to my generation So we can succeed The following footage is of the founder of the Hare Krishna movement, His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada, as he became known, single-handedly introduced this traditional religion of India to the Western countries with unprecedented success. He also went to the Soviet Union and instructed his first disciple there, Anatoly Pinyayev. This next song is dedicated to that great man. His activities will one day have future generations amazed that such a humble, caring man actually lived amongst us. His example and his teachings are forever alive in the vast legacy of literature he left behind. In the preface of his epic work, Srimad Bhagavatam, Srila Prabhupada states, human society at the present moment is not in the darkness of oblivion. It has made rapid progress in the field of material comforts, education and economic development throughout the entire world. But there is a pinprick somewhere in the social body at large, and therefore there are large-scale quarrels even over less important issues. There is a need of a clue as to how humanity can become one in peace, friendship and prosperity. Therefore, Lord Chaitanya's movement will fill this need, for it's a cultural presentation for the re-spiritualization of the entire human society. Some of the following footage of Srila Prabhupada has only just been recently found, and this is the first time it's been shown.
the campaign continued, a major breakthrough came in December 1987 when the Australian Prime Minister was in Moscow. While he was there, Mr Hawke presented Soviet General Secretary Gorbachev with a special request from Prahlad that he please release Anatoly Pinyayev, the original Soviet Hare Krishna. Anatoly had been imprisoned for six years in a Soviet psychiatric institution. During the December superpower summit that resulted in a treaty banning intermediate-range nuclear missiles, US President Reagan and Soviet leader Gorbachev also discussed human rights. Across the street, dozens of Hare Krishna devotees chanted on a footpath, carrying signs that read, Mr Gorbachev, please let our friends go and free the Soviet Hare Krishnas. Inside, White House officials presented a list of names to Soviet officials, including that of Anatoly Pinyayev. The paper was returned with a check mark next to Anatoly's name, signalling that he'd already been freed. Then on June the 20th, 1988, an unusual event occurred. The Soviet authorities finally registered the Hare Krishna movement in Moscow. This was actual proof of the reality of Gorbachev's glasnost policy and a demonstration of the strength of the four-year international campaign during which three of the imprisoned Soviet devotees died. Hare Krishna devotees are now a familiar sight, dancing and chanting through the streets of Moscow and Leningrad. On February the 21st, 1989, 59 members of the Soviet Hare Krishna movement were given permission to attend the annual Krishna festival in Mayapur, India. The possibility of bringing some of those Soviet devotees to Australia was under discussion while this film was being made. Yes, the Hare Krishnas have won their freedom in the Soviet Union, but for the Hare Krishnas in the USSR, this is not the end, it's only the beginning. Oh. 